It is time for me to window manager hop once again. You guys know that I've been window manager hopping a lot since the beginning of the year. I, of course, started the new year still using Qtile, and then I quickly switched to i3. I lived in i3 for about three weeks. That was the first time I had ever used i3, and uh, it was a fine window manager. Um, then I switched to DWM. DWM was really great. I lived in DWM for about three or four weeks, and then I moved on to Xmonad, which I've used many times in the past. I love Xmonad. Been on Xmonad for a little over a month. Very, very good uh, window manager. Possibly my favorite window manager of all time, Xmonad. Very extensible and feature rich, if you know a little Haskell. Today, though, I feel like it is time for a new challenge, so I'm going to move on to a different window manager, one I've never used before, don't know anything about. Herbstluft WM. Again, don't know anything about it other than it's a tiling window manager with a funny name. The name, I think, means Autumn Air in German. So, let's get started. So, I've gone ahead and installed Herbsluft WM here on my Manjaro installation. You guys know that I run Manjaro on my main production machine. I have other drives in my systems with uh, other Linux distros also installed. I have about seven different drives in this machine, but the main drive for the work I do on this channel, I, I always do everything in Manjaro. Originally, this started life as Manjaro's i3 edition. I installed Qtile on it, then I installed DWM on it, Xmonad, now Herbs Luft WM. So I've got five tiling window managers now on this version of Manjaro, and we may add more tiling window managers as we go forward. Who knows? So this is very much a stock configuration for Herbs Luft WM. Let me show you my desktop here. I really haven't configured it much at all. The only real configuration I've done is you guys see I have a panel. This is Polybar. Uh, I already had Polybar on the system because I mentioned I lived in i3 for about three weeks, very early in the year, like the first of the year. Switched to i3 for about three weeks, and the panel I used with i3 was Polybar. I configured i3 or Polybar to work with i3, and Polybar works just fine here in Herbs Luft as well, so I'm going to use it. I could have also used Xmobar with Herbs Luft. I'm sure that would have worked just fine, but many of you guys are going to want to maybe play with my configs later, you know, pull them down from GitHub and maybe have your own Herbs Luft experience. And most of you guys are not going to want to use Xmobar because you're not going to be like me and also have Xmonad and the entire Haskell libraries on the system. So uh, it makes sense to go with something like Polybar. It's a lot more lightweight and minimal as far as dependencies. So let me pull up the config. Uh, one thing I will go ahead and tell you guys right now, Herbs Luft operates completely differently than the tiling window managers that I'm comfortable using. You guys, I, I complained about this when I lived in i3. i3, the, the kind of i3 workflow, um, it's not the workflow I'm used to in window managers like Qtile and Xmonad and DWM. Those three tiling window managers are very similar. They're almost clones of each other. And in fact, DWM is one of the oldest tiling window managers around. It's kind of like the original, well, one of the original tiling window managers. Xmonad is also very old. It started a little after DWM, but Xmonad really was just a clone of DWM. It was just written in Haskell rather than C. Uh, and then Qtile started a little after that, and Qtile basically was a clone of Xmonad, except written in Python rather than Haskell. So all three of them, the key bindings and the way they function, all very similar, all very much the same workflow. That's why it was no problem for me to live in DWM for that three or four weeks, because it was the exact same workflow as Qtile, which is the exact same workflow as Xmonad. I3 was completely different. I'm going to tell you right now, Herbs Luft is very different than any of the other tiling window managers I've used. For example, I have three monitors. Right now, I'm capturing the second monitor. I'm recording that. That's what you guys are seeing right now. Uh, how do I get focus to this monitor? Because right now, the focus is on OBS over on my right monitor. Just moving the mouse to this monitor does not bring focus here. If I hit super enter to open up a terminal, it's going to open up on the far right monitor, not this monitor. Uh, if whatever workspace this happens to be on, I think it's on workspace 2, mod 2, 
uh, does not do anything. It actually <laughs> moves OBS from what was Workspace 8 on this third monitor over here. So let me swap that back. So how do I swap focus? Well, it looks like to do this, you have to do mod and HNL. HNL for left and right, the Vim keys. So right now the focus is on this far right monitor. So if I do mod H to move to the left, you see now the border here is green. So this monitor does have focus. Now I could mod enter to open a terminal. I'm going to close that. Let me open up the uh, herbs Luft config file though. So this is my herbs Luft config. It's uh, called auto start is the name of this script. You'll find it in dot config slash herbs Luft WM slash auto start is the name of the file. Again, this is very much stock herbs look. The only thing I really did was at the bottom, you know, basically this is a bash script, by the way. Um, that is one of the, I guess, pros for herbs look. One of the things people really like is the config file is a bash script. Most people know, if you know any programming, you probably know bash. It was one of the reasons why a lot of people like Qtile. Most people know a little Python, so Qtile is pretty easy to configure. Same thing with Herbs Luft, it's a bash script, so you should be able to con configure this thing just fine if you know a little bash scripting. Anyway, at the bottom I added uh, this little information about launching a panel. It launches this particular shell script, uh, panel.sh. Let me zoom in. So I'm using a ST today, so. By the way, uh, you guys notice normally on my uh, recordings, you know, ST, I patched it for transparency. I did the alpha patch. I have no transparency. Compton is not running. I haven't uh, included Compton in this uh, config script. Again, the config here is very much basic out of the box. The only thing I launch a panel by default, which is polybar, and the other thing I added was, I think at the top of this script somewhere, uh, mod return to open a terminal by default, I think it was set to either xterm or urxvt. I changed it to st, the simple terminal, because that's what I use. I also just added this line, nitrogen space dash dash restore. Of course, draws a wallpaper on the screen, so we have a wallpaper rather than just a solid color background. And then the other thing I did was uh, these 30 lines or so are all the terminal applications, uh, th the key bindings for those programs I typically use. It's the exact same key bindings that I used in Qtile, i3, DWM, Xmonad, and now Herbs Luft. So launching all my standard terminal applications are exactly the same regardless of what tiling window manager I'm in. It just makes life easier because I know just like it was in Xmonad and DWM prior to that, Mod 1 opens my terminal um, web browser links. Um, so this is the links web browser loading up. I think that's distrowatch.com. It loads by default. I know Mod Shift 1 opens my file manager, VIFM. And the uh, Uberzug image previews are working just fine here in VIFM on Herbs Look. Let me close that out. My initial thoughts on Herbs Luft, just using it a couple of hours really, is okay right now I'm recording in OBS. OBS has focus. To get focus on this middle monitor that I'm recording, just clicking on the desktop with no programs open does not shift focus. But if I have a program open, like I have Vim open right now, if I click on it, now that does shift focus to that monitor. So as long as I have a program open, I can actually shift focus with the mouse, but if I don't have anything open, if I close ST and then shift focus back over here to this monitor, I can't just come back and click and shift focus to this monitor without having a program open. And I can't open a program on this monitor without having focus on it, so I actually have to do that weird key combination. Um, well, it's not weird, but mod H for left and mod L for right to, you know, shift focus amongst the monitors. Kind of strange. Well, let me get back to my config here. I mentioned transparency is not set by default. I should add that. So somewhere in this auto start file, we should go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and in, enter uh, into insert mode here in Vim and do Compton space dash capital C for the config flag here. And then the location of my Compton config, which is dot config slash Compton slash compton.conf 
and then we'll write that and if I restart this would yeah it will go ahead and load the Compton compositor with the transparency very nice all right I mentioned you know just shifting focus amongst the monitors is very weird it's gonna take me a, a lot of time to get used to that also how it this determines the layout of the windows on the screen is a little strange. It does have some predetermined layouts. I like predetermined layouts. Uh, that way I never have to guess where the windows are going to appear. So if I just go ahead and enter a, uh, a key binding to open a terminal, which is mod enter, mod enter, opens a terminal. It, hit it one more time and you can see it is this kind of uh, columned layout here, right? Or actually more of a row layout. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Anyway, uh, I think mod spacebar cycles through some uh, built-in layout. So mod spacebar now gets me the horizontal, the columned layout. So first is the row layout, then the column layout. Then the next one, of course, is monocle or full screen, uh, different terminologies, different window managers. I call it the monocle layout. This is where every window is full screen. And mod j and k to shift between the open windows i believe or mod shift well mod what is going on here why can't i shift between the open windows oh well well but mod spacebar gets me to the next layout which looks like it is a grid layout let me open more one more window yes let me go back to that monocle layout though and why can't i shift focus you know what i'm going to have to read the config and this is, you know, when you're brand new, even somebody like me, you know, I'm brand new to Herb's Luft. What I need to do is I need to sit down and actually read this config file, the default key bindings. If, if I don't figure out what the default key bindings are uh, very quickly, I am going to struggle. My life is going to be miserable. And reading the, uh, the config here, I can already tell. It's a little different than something like Qtile and Xmonad. Xmonad and Qtile, I think you use mod J and mod K, Bavim keys, just to cycle through the windows in the stack. J went one direction in the stack, K went the other. Uh, Herbs Lift is one of those window managers that uses all four Vim keys, and they are directional. So H, J, K, L, and they actually do move in those directions. H always moves to the left, J up, K down. Uh, or J down, K up, L to the right. So if I open some more windows here, let me just open a couple of programs here. So mod H will move focus to the left. Mod L will move focus to the right. J and K, which are down and up, do nothing right now because there's no windows above the window with focus. That's strange, where in something like Xmonad, Qtile, DWM, mod J and mod K, are going to move you through the stack regardless of where the windows are arranged. It's always just going to figure out where the next window is. J just went in, you know, in one direction, K went in the other, but it really didn't matter. But it does matter in Herb's Luff, so H, J, K, L are actually left down, up, right. One other uh, different aspect to Herb's Luft is it's more of kind of a uh, manual tiler. So if I go to the middle monitor here, I have focus, you see the border, the green border around the whole monitor. If I hit mod and I think O, oh, you see it splits the right half of this into another area. I could launch a program in either of those borders. So right now the focus is on the left part of the screen, but if I mod L to move to the right, you know, I shift focus to that right blanked area of the screen and I could launch something right there such as a terminal let me close the terminal or you know I could launch anything here there's Googler and you know anything I want I could mod H to move back to the left and then launch something here so I could launch I don't know whatever this program I think it's glances yeah this is glances it's another interactive process viewer H top if you will so and then I could mod instead of O I could mod I think I, or is it U? Mod U to split under. So, so mod O to split uh, to the right, mod U to split below. So uh, you could keep dividing the screen up however you want to keep dividing it up, and then you could place windows there uh, manually yourself. 
Uh, I typically don't like stuff like this. I don't like deciding where the windows are going to be myself. I prefer just having predetermined layouts. Typically, in my tiling window manager workflow, I'm only going to use maybe four different layouts max. You know, I need like a master and stack layout, maybe a grid layout, a monocle layout, of course, for full screen for things like browsers and OBS. I typically do full screen. And then you need a floating layout. You're always going to need a floating layout for certain programs. Uh, other than that, I don't really need a whole bunch of layouts, and I really don't need to uh, just decide the layout myself on the fly. I don't like these kinds of uh, window managers. It's one of the things I didn't like about i3. i3 had this. I never used that aspect of i3. Probably not going to use this aspect of Herb's Luft. Now, how do I close these predetermined areas that I've created here. Mod R for remove. So mod R will start getting rid of all these until you only have, of course, the one left. You can't get rid of the last one. Uh, and you see, it's just a big border around the screen. That's another thing that's it's kind of jarring to have this border always here. I could, I'm sure in the config file, I could just remove that, the border. Is it really necessary? I'm not sure. Not sure if I, if I'm, I need that border there. Visually, it may help. Uh, it certainly helps to figure out what monitor has focus because uh, Polybar, I can tell you, I haven't played with Polybar on Herb's Luft, but just a minute, uh, it does not really tell me what monitor has focus because right now my second monitor has focus and it's on Workspace 2, but every instance of Polybar on all three monitors says Workspace 2 right now. <laughs> Even though they're not all on Workspace 2, just the one with Focus. So that might be a, a bug in Polybar that I have to fix. So this is really my first day with Herb's Luft. Uh, like two hours, maybe, spent in Herb's Luft so far. Just getting it installed, getting Polybar up and working, adding some of my app key bindings, but really I haven't played with the system key bindings, the, the actual window manager function key bindings. I haven't touched at all. Uh, so this will be interesting. Again, Herb's Luft, not like any other tiling window manager I've used so far. Should be a fun experience. I'm going to go ahead and start pushing some of my configs to my GitLab page so you guys can, can check out what I do along the way. Before I go, this show was made possible by Ansem, Carlos, Chris, Douglas, Dylan, Leo, Rob, Robert, and Tony. They are the producers of this show. Without those guys... You guys wouldn't know anything about Herb's Lift WM because I, I couldn't have made this video without the support from people like Ansem, Carlos, Chris, Douglas, Dylan, Leo, Rob, Robert, and Tony. show was also brought to you by all those fine ladies and gentlemen. You, you guys see all those names on this, the screen that help support my work over on Patreon. You'd like to consider supporting my work? Please do so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.